Hey there, everybody. Thank you for welcoming us to wherever you are today. I am Scott. And I'm Tanya. It's going to be a great day to get today. All the promises of God that we have been learning have been amazing. And today is going to be just like that. It is going to be amazing. So get your notepads out, get your pencils out so you'll be ready to take notes today. Hey, our promise last week was Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What an amazing promise. And this week, we're going to go forward in another promise we're going to launch out. But hey, first, before we get to that word, man, we're going to worship the Lord uh, with music, with song. I want you guys to engage. And so let's do what we do every single week. And that is let's engage first in prayer making Jesus our sole focus. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity today to worship together. Wherever we are today around this globe, we are together. We are united. We are the ecclesia, the body of Christ. We are a family, a community. And Lord, we just come to you. We put our focus on you, Jesus, and we are ready to sing, not just about you, but to you and with one another, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, our hearts are open. Our ears are open. We desire to hear your voice today. We desire to be everything we can be in you, know what you're saying to us, and do what you say. And we want to do that today. So we give you praise and honor and glory in the name of Jesus. We declare this, amen. Come on, guys. Let's get ready to sing out loud and worship Jesus. Do what only you can do. I want to live. 
open the heavens, rain down on me, fall down on me. Make that your prayer today. Rain down, Lord, rain down, God. Rain down, Lord, rain down. Come on, sing that chorus one more time. My hands. Hello, THP Online community. Thank you for inviting us into your space today. We are so excited about what God is going to do through this online gathering. Do me a favor, say hi in the chat. Say hi to your moderators. Don't forget that later this week, we will be having a blog version of the message as well as a Spanish audio version of the blog for our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. If you would like to be more engaged in our THP Online family, please contact Pastor Matt. His email is real simple. It's matt at thpshreveport.com. If you email him, he will connect you with a small group to where you can have more personal interaction than what we are able to offer here through this online gathering. All of that being said, grab your Bible, grab your notebook, and let's worship God together. Thank you so much for taking time to be part of our online worship gathering. Thank you for inviting us to wherever you are at today. If you would like to be able to support the ministry of The Healing Place through your tithe and offering, feel free to go to our website, thpshreveport.com, where you can give online, or you can text to give at 318-225-7339. Thank you again for being part of our THP online community. Hey there, everybody. Thank you for welcoming me to wherever you are today. Listen, we are going to take a deep, deep dive today. So settle in. Come on, let's get ready to take some notes. Let's get ready to be fully engaged. But first of all, I want to say thank you. You guys have reached out. You guys have been praying for me for the last about week or so. I had a pretty intense physical battle kind of going on and you guys have prayed for me. I have full confidence in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying for me, all right? So now let's take a deep dive. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11 is our promise this week. Uh, the message title is called Until That Day. Until That Day. Come on, moderators, put that in there. Until That Day. Come on, everybody, respond back to the moderators right now. Until That Day, all right? Jeremiah 29, 11, very familiar to people who have been a part of church at all, very familiar even to people who don't know God. They've probably seen this somewhere, seen it on a picture, a tapestry, a pillow or something, but so many times it's just that one verse and not the context. We're going to dig deep into this promise. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Now God's speaking to his children who have been disobedient. They have, God has told them to do things. They haven't done them. Their fathers, their grandfathers, their the generations before them have, have heard from the Lord, seen the miracles of the Lord, and then not done what God has said. And, but even in that frustration, God says, I know the thoughts I have for you. And it's thoughts of good and peace, not evil. And it's to give you a future and a hope. So even in disobedience, God is saying, look, my thoughts toward you are of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, before we get too far in this backstory of Jeremiah and what was to come later for them, let's take a look at someone who encapsulates this promise perfectly. Another kind of figurehead, another prophet in this same time frame who is also an exile, who becomes an exile in a foreign land. His name is Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says this, but Daniel was determined, determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. 
Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. This sounds very trivial. It sounds very, uh, okay, Daniel just didn't want to eat the food and the wine of the culture or whatever. It sounds very trivial, but there's a whole lot more happening here. And there's a bigger statement that Daniel is making by his behavior. And it's something that we can learn from for 2021. Two words. The first one is this, determined. Put that in the, ch- put that in the chat right now. Determined. Sometimes translated resolved, Okay. The use of the word here means that Daniel had a philosophy. He had a way of thinking, okay? A way of thinking and believing that was well-established, non-negotiable. He was not moving away from it. Again, another word is immovable. He was immovable. Daniel was immovable. He was determined. Determined to what? Not defile. That's the second word, defile. Put that in the chat. Defile means to be polluted, to be stained. So here's Daniel. He has this philosophy, this belief, this way of thinking that is immovable. His heart and his mind has been, his affections have been turned towards the Lord, towards righteousness. And now he refuses to be polluted or stained. You know, the Bible talks about that in Christ, we've been given robes of righteousness. We've been, we've been clothed in righteousness, right? And then it also talks about the pollution and the stain of sin. And so Daniel says, no, no, no. My heart, my mind, I'm immovable. I am determined to live this life of righteousness. I refuse to defile myself, right? I refuse to pollute or stain myself, Now we know that Christ's sacrifice on the cross provided us righteousness. We are seen by God as clean. Through Christ, we are now seen by God as clean. God says, I know the thoughts I have for you. They're good. Peace, not evil. I'm giving you a future and a hope. How? Why? Through Christ. Now I see you as clean through Christ. If there are stains on what we are wearing, it is because we have put our own hands to it and defiled it ourselves or polluted it ourselves or stained it ourselves. See, Daniel's determination was not about food and wine. I repeat, (laughs) This is not about food or drink, but about the lifestyle they symbolized. Catch that. So many times people read about Daniel and now they're making it about a dietary structure or they're making it about he's making this some kind of this massive cultural statement. He's not doing that. Daniel was not making a statement about the culture he was forced to live in, nor was he advocating a specific dietary structure. He was making sure, listen to me, This is key for 2021. He was making sure that he did not get deceived into a philosophy of thinking that would destroy his relationship with God. It wasn't about food and drink. It was about a philosophy, a way of thinking and living where you turn your affection that would destroy his relationship with God. Let's dig a little bit deeper in this. Daniel had made up his mind ahead of time to stay pure. Listen, you can't arrive at the moment of decision and just be like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm going to stay pure. You've got to, you've got to determine ahead of time that you're going to stay pure. Listen, there's a lot of talk today about deception and, you know, vaccinations and the mark of the beast and all this stuff. Listen, you have to make a determination right now what you believe. What is the truth? Because when you get to that day and you get to that moment, it's going to be hard for you to draw on something you don't have. You have got to determine today to stay pure. Because listen, peer pressure didn't didn't start in the 80s or 90s or 2000s. Peer pressure's been all the way back to the garden there was peer pressure. Pressure from the serpent to Eve, Adam to Eve, Eve to Adam. There was peer pressure in the garden. Sin enters and immediately there is peer pressure. So peer pressure is not new. For Daniel and his friends, guess what? There was tremendous pressure to fit in. You got to talk, you got to walk, you got to think, you got to dress like a Babylonian. Sound familiar? 
We live in a culture that tells us what to wear, what products to buy, what companies to buy them from. We have an entire social engineering structure now with social media that is driving you to buy certain things that they, they, they want you to buy, not even what you want to buy. Their names were even changed and we in the church have lived this out for for centuries now, calling them by their Babylonian names. In Sunday school, we have taught our children Babylonian names rather than their God-given names. Talk about pressure. When they were brought into this culture, they were given clothes. You gotta wear the clothes of the culture. You gotta do this, you gotta do this. And we're changing your name. Listen, Hananiah, how many of you know Hananiah? What does that name mean? It means the Lord is gracious. That's a God-given name, right? Hananiah. Well, who do we know him as? It becomes Shadrach, which means the command of Aku. That's to another God. They are affirming their name now and ascribing that to another God. How about this right now? Write Hananiah, H-A-N-A-N-I-A-H. Write it over and over and over again in the chat so you can see it. So instead of next time somebody says who was in the fire, you can start with Hananiah and not Shadrach. Hananiah, 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 the Lord is gracious. Well, have you ever heard of Mishael? That name means who is what God is. Well, that becomes Meshach, who is what Aku is. Again, ascribing to a pagan God. So instead of Meshach, Mishael, M-I-S-H-A-E-L, Mishael, Mishael. Come on, say it with me, Mishael. So we're talking about Hananiah, Mishael. Wait a second, it's Shadrach. No, 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 no. Hananiah, Mishael. Then there's Azariah. The Lord has helped. And that becomes Abednego, which means servant of Nebo. So let's serve somebody else, not the true one God. Listen, this is happening in our society. Society is trying to label us or trying to put names on us that ascribe us not to our Lord and what he says and what he's put in the book, not what he has said we are, but what the world tries to make us to be. And the world is actually dividing. They're not uniting anything. They're dividing us all. They're dividing us all up into to, to colors, to names, to, to, to regions, to states, to cities, to, to political parties. The world system is trying to get us to believe and have a way of thinking and a philosophy that turns us away from Jesus. Listen, this is good, y'all. And then there's Daniel, God my judge. Well, you know, the text said Daniel. But yeah, his name though becomes Belshazzar, which means make Balak protect us. Again, ascribing to another pagan god. But can I tell you this? The text calls him Daniel because he was born Daniel and he died Daniel. And we get this amazing encapsulation of all this to all those who were in foreign lands, to all those who died believing in the promises of God. From Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 through 16, all these people died. Now before that in Hebrews, it layers all these people who live for the Lord. And it says, all these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. And they agreed, listen, they agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. And obviously people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back, but they were looking for a better place. Come on, somebody, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared a city for them. Ask yourself this question today. How do I maintain my consecrated life to God while living in an unconsecrated society? Listen, while our social construct is becoming more and more unpredictable, it is also becoming increasingly harsh towards biblical Christianity, even in America, even right here in the South. So how do we continue breathing this polluted air and not become polluted? How did Daniel and his friends, how did, they, how did they keep taking in this polluted atmosphere and this polluted culture and not be polluted? They chose to put the Lord first in everything. We talked about this two weeks ago. 
consecrated. We don't have to be amazing. We need to be consecrated. We have to be consecrated and then the Lord will do amazing things among us because God is amazing. All we have to do is be consecrated. Daniel and his friends chose to put the Lord first in everything. When I say first, that's not just 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. That's not just here and now everywhere. That's not just singing a song with K-Love and Air One. That's not just having worship music in your house. I'm talking about the Lord first in lifestyle, in schedule, in calendar, in finances, in your everyday life. He is first. But that would not be safe or easy. We just talked about that a couple weeks ago. Not easy, not safe to be consecrated. Because we know that later on, Daniel is actually thrown to the lions because he would not compromise, he would not dishonor God. His friends were thrown into the fire and they refused to worship the idols of their, of their day. However, they experienced the amazing, the wonders of God. It wasn't easy and it wasn't safe, but they, why did they experience the wonders of God? Because they were consecrated. They chose to put the Lord first. They continually saw the favor of God on their lives while living in Babylon. Their witness, their testimonies not destroyed because they lived in this pol polluted environment. The opposite was actually true. They lived their lives honorably before the Lord and impacted Babylonian culture to where the evil king Nebuchadnezzar publicly blessed God because they didn't worship any other God but their own. Doesn't mean that Nebuchadnezzar got saved and all of a sudden told everybody to worship God. But in that moment, with them in the fire and him seeing the amazing power of God, he saw the consecration and he saw the amazing things of God. And he blessed God because they refused to serve the gods he was trying to get them to serve. So back to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, verse 4. This is the before from this promise. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, all of them have been carried away captive, right? Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. God caused it, not the enemy. Build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit. Wait a second, we've been carried away to captivity. We... we like, what are we doing? God says, build houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat their fruit. Then he says in verse six, take wives, beget sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give to your daughters to your two husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished. Here's what God tells his people about this polluted culture. While you're there, like you're not gonna be there forever, but while you're there, get jobs, get married, have kids, build houses, plant gardens, plan on being there. And you know what God was saying? We are pioneers, remember? We're not consumers. Listen, y'all, we are pioneers. We are not consumers. We are pioneers. We don't just use where we live. We invest in where we live. We multiply while we are here. We do not decrease. If the schools are terrible, Listen to me, if the schools are terrible, volunteer and change the atmosphere. If you can't, create an alternative and start a school. I said it. If you're complaining every single day of sending your kid to a school because of what's being taught to them and what's being imparted to their minds, then create an alternative. Start a school. Well, Scott, you're making that sound real easy. It's not easy and it's not safe. But God will do amazing things for it if he puts it on your heart. We spend so much time criticizing a culture that is ungodly, expecting them to be godly, and then we never give a godly alternative because actually we like the ungodly, polluted atmospheres. We like the things of the world more than the things of God. Verse 7. You guys still with me? You haven't turned me off yet, have you? Verse seven. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. In other words, live for my glory while you're in Babylon. And as you bless the city, guess what's gonna happen? You will be blessed. He's saying invest. Don't just, don't just be a consumer and take. Invest. Invest. Verse eight, 
For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams, which you caused to be dreamed. Listen, let's go verse 9 and 10. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. And then listen to what he tells them. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. He says, do not listen to false teachers. But he also says this, nor listen to your dreams, which you cause to be dreamed. He's saying, I know you're in Babylon and you don't want to be there. You're probably dreaming about being somewhere else. But do not be falsely deceived that I don't want you in Babylon. So many of us live places and we so long to be somewhere else that we forget, be where you are. Even our own dreams can, can keep us away from what God has for us. Do not listen. Satan steals, comes to steal, kill, and destroy, trying to get us to believe his lies so we will do evil in our own Babylon. How many believers have been deceived in the last couple of years because of a political construct or a political opinion? How many of them have broken down their witnesses and ruined their testimonies because they are now doing as evil is being done to them? They're doing evil back. We need to know the truth and the truth will set us free and his name is Jesus and God made him sin so we might become righteous. Our hope, salvation, life, eternity, joy, it's all in Jesus. Listen, there are two primary enemies of the gospel. Idolatry and defiled religion. Idolatry and defiled religion. Jeremiah says, watch for false teaching. The temptation to idolatry would have come from the Babylonians right? Come into our culture, receive everything we have. But the temptation of defiled religion would have come from the Jews. You get it from both sides. See, sin is turning our worship from God to something else. Because atheism isn't the main problem, it's idolatry. We must keep ourselves from idols. Listen to me clearly. We put things and people in the place of glory, and then we worship them by the sacrifices we make to them. You know, your calendar can be an idol. Our kids can be an idol. Our spouses can be an idol. Activity can be an idol. Fun can even become an idol. Fun activities, things that we love to do, but now all of a sudden that comes first. I'm not going to all my personal thoughts on that, but... Listen, idolatry becomes when we start making sacrifices for other things and other people more than we are making sacrifices to the Lord, bringing ourselves as a living sacrifice. Listen, there are so many amazing gifts God has given us in this life, so many amazing things to do, so many amazing activities to do, so many blessings that God has given us, but they are not God. They can never meet all of our expectations or our needs. Life isn't about us. It's about God. Church isn't about us. It's about Jesus. It's his church. He died. He resurrected. He ascended. He sent. And he will return. And here's what he says in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, the way that you know. You know the way. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You're you're foreigners. You're pilgrims in this land. You're exiles in this foreign land known as earth. You're heavenly citizens, but I'm preparing a place for you there. And I'm going to come back. I promise I'm coming back to get you. Do you really think that they really understood God's promise in Jeremiah 29, 11? I don't. I don't really think that they grasped the fullness of it. By faith, they heard God and they believed God. And guess what? They obeyed God until that day came, until that day. The promise would be seen, not by them, not by the originals, but by their grandchildren, 
their great-grandchildren. Seventy years of captivity, many of them died in Babylon. So it wasn't about them at all. It wasn't about them. It was about future generations. That they would know. That the future generation, do our kids know? Do our kids know about Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah and Daniel? Do they know? Do they know about Jesus? Like really know about Jesus? Not because we listen to a song on the way to school or, or anything like, do they really know Jesus? Do they know the word of God? Until that day, that's what it was for these people. Until that day, God strengthened them in Babylon because they built houses, they planted gardens, they invested, they lived for the Lord, they consecrated themselves. They weren't polluted by the culture. So let's read it again. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. He's giving them that promise as they are walking into a foreign polluted land to live for 70 years of captivity. It doesn't sound like that promise will come true, but it did. Why? Because the promises of God are yes and amen. Listen, we are, we are called to live as determined exiled, exiles, consecrated to God, not defiled homesteaders. And I'm going to close out with these two scriptures. Psalm chapter 137 and verse 1 through 4. I've spoken on this many, many times. Not quite this way. Psalm 137, 1 through 4. They are longing for Zion. Why? Because they're in a foreign land. Sound familiar? That's Jeremiah 29. By the rivers of Babylon, here they are, exiles in a foreign land. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and we wept and we remembered Zion. Now we know in the New Testament, Zion is a, is a, is a, is a precursor to heaven. It's a new heaven and a new earth, right? Zion, that city that we shall dwell in forever and ever and ever and ever. They say, we are in this foreign land by the rivers of Babylon. And there we sat down and we wept and we remembered Zion and we hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. We stopped singing. Whew. For there, those who carried us away captive ask us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Here's what their response was. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? And my question is this. How could we not sing the song of the Lord in a foreign land? How could we not? Listen, I'm just going to call this what it is. And I've even said this in the past and Lord forgive me. I'm not saying all Christian music is good or well done or has the perfect lyrics or the perfect theology a lot of times. But how can we not sing the songs of Zion in this foreign land? I'm not talking about in this building. I'm talking about in a foreign land. I'm talking about at your job place. I'm talking about at your school. I'm talking about at your home. Listen, is there more coming through uh, the, the, the speakers in your house? Is it more about the songs of Zion or is it more about the songs of Babylon? How could we not sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? We're exiles, but we're consecrated exiles. We're refusing to be polluted by the philosophy and the way of thinking of this world. And then Peter has a grand thing to say to us. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 11, beloved, I beg you. Listen, he's not just asking, he's begging. I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. He's not talking about Babylon, he's talking about the earth. 
as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Determine not to be defiled. Verse 12. Having your conduct honorable, sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. He didn't say they would, but he said they may. As we live honorably, as we build houses, as we plant gardens, as we invest in the land and not just take from the land, as we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land, as we worship Jesus, as we praise Jesus, as we preach Jesus, as we live Jesus, as we are consecrated pilgrims and exiles in this foreign land, refusing to take on the titles and the names and the garments and the things of this world, refusing to become that. Said so Daniel, refuse the food and the drink. Was it about food and drink? No way. It was about lifestyle. It was about a way of thinking, a philosophy. He was consecrated to the Lord. And because of that, the Lord did amazing wonders in Daniel's day. The Lord did wonders in the lion's den. He did wonders in the furnace for the Hebrew children. He did wonders among them in captivity in Babylon. Why? Because they consecrated themselves because even though the promise was not going to come in their day, they believed God until that day because their grandchildren saw it and their great-grandchildren saw it and their great-great-grandchildren saw it and it went all the way to Jesus and Jesus creates another line and it comes all the way to us and now we have the truth. We have the treasure. We have the revelation of Jesus that we can receive Christ. We can take on the robes of righteousness. We can throw away our filthy rags that have been polluted by this world. We can throw down our sinful habits and our sinful ways. We can throw those things at the cross and now we can take on robes of righteousness and determine not to be polluted. And listen, it may not happen in my day. I may not see the coming of Jesus myself, but I know the promise that it may be my kids, it may be my great-grandchildren, but somebody in my line, they are going to see the coming of Jesus and I can promise you this with everything that's in me, my line, my family, we have prepared before that day to stay pure so that on that day, we're not running around trying to find somebody else's lamp filled with oil. We're not running around trying to find somebody else's anointing and walk with God. We're not trying to reach back to grandma's walk with God. We have our own walk with God. We are pure like those vestal virgins. We are pure. We have our, we have our lamps. They're burning bright. What is that lamp? It's the Holy Spirit and it's burning bright until that day. Because guess what? There is coming a day. God said, I'll give you a future and a hope. He wasn't talking about Babylon. He was talking about an eternal future, an eternal hope, a promise that is yes and amen. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now for everything that you have spoken to us. And I thank you that you are moving in hearts and lives right now. And Lord, even before we 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 take our harps off the willows and ascend back into a time of worship and song and singing the song of Zion in a foreign land, Lord, we bring ourselves to you right now. Listen, you don't need me to pray a prayer for you. You need to pray a prayer for you. You need to pray a prayer of consecration. You need to bring yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you first. Man, you've had a part in my life, Lord, but not first. I have, I have some stains. And I have some stains, not because of what you've done to me, Lord. I have some stains because of what I put my own hands to, what I received myself, what I got from the world. I allowed it to get on me. And now it's starting to get in me. And Lord, I need you to cleanse me from all that unrighteousness so that I can be pure, so that I can determine to live until that day, to live for you, just like Daniel, just like Ananiah, just like Mishael, 
just like Azariah. That God, I'm in the fire. And Lord, even if you don't come in the fire, we're still not going to deny you. We're going to serve you till the end. Lord, we know you can come and save us. But even if you don't, we'll never deny you. We'll never look to another God. It will always be to you, Lord, until that day. Listen, I've given you everything I got today. Let's pull those, let's pull those harps off the willows today, okay? We're going to ascend with worship and we're going to sing a song of Zion just flying out of this place, ascending out of this time together. And listen, you're going to get all the instructions you need to get in the rest of this, but right now let's just turn our affection toward Jesus and let's just worship. Fathering the orphan in me, you say I'm yours, because I never am alone, I never am alone, you found me, I never am alone. Never am alone. You found me as I've made up my mind. I'm never going back. I'm never going back. But I've made up my mind. I'm never going back. I'm never going back. Righteousness found only in your face. You see my heart. You extend your grace. Eyes open, falling in love again. You say I'm your it was always you. Yes, it, was. it was always you. You found me, but it was always you. It was always you. You found me, because I made up my mind. I'm never going back, but I made up my mind. I'm never going back. I'm never going. Come on, purpose in your hearts. I made up my mind. I'm never going back. I'm never going back Cause I made up my mind I'm never going back I'm never going back Going back, Lord Come on, maybe you're facing an impossible situation. Just resolve in your heart. Declare with your mouth that you're never going back. He paid it all. And he gave it all for us. 
So today, Lord, we lift you up, Jesus. We declare that you are God. You're righteous and holy. And I'm singing out your lovely name. I'm giving you everything. You make my soul alive. You put your love inside. I'm singing out your lovely name. And I'm giving you everything. You make me guys it's been an amazing worship gathering all morning long god is moving powerfully in some of your life right now for some of you who are watching this in this moment there is an area of your life that's been highlighted holy spirit is just speaking to you about a situation about a, a place in your life that maybe you haven't quite surrendered over to him just yet Perhaps there's a situation in your life that you've been, you've been worried about and you've been struggling with how that looks to have it completely surrendered to God. You realize you haven't determined to consecrate and set things to a side. This is a moment for you. This is a moment for you to take your next step. And we want to take that next step with you. In the chat right now, how can our team pray with you? Just leave in the chat right now. Maybe there's something really private and you're like, you know what else? I just don't feel comfortable sharing this right now. Reach out to us. If you're on our website, thbstreetport.com, there's actually a prayer option that's uh, to the side of the video that you can click on and you can send a prayer request in. Let our team know how we can pray with you. Or you can email us, mediahub at thbstreetport.com. You can also uh, reach us on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can send us a private message on those platforms and I will reach out to you, and pray with you, and encourage you. Why? Because we love you. We care about you here at The Healing Place. You are part of the THB family, and when you're part of a family, you're never alone, no matter what. 
So how can we encourage you today? How can we pray with you? How can we help you take your next step? I'm going to pray us out. And while I'm praying again, leave some stuff in the chat. Let our team communicate with you. Let them encourage you. Let them lift you up. But even if you decide not to, don't do this alone. Don't leave this gathering thinking that you're all alone. Let us walk with you as you decide to be determined doing what God's called you to do. Yes, there are blessings God has for you. And there is a time where you will see great fruit. But sometimes those times of great fruit, that great harvest takes some plowing and some work. And this is a moment to plow. So let's pray. God, we just thank you for your presence, your grace. We thank you for this opportunity to come together through this online gathering to worship you, to lift your name on high, to experience you in a real way. And I pray for every person who's watching right now, who's listening to this online worship gathering. Holy Spirit, do a work in their lives. Highlight an area that maybe they haven't quite made a stance yet. They haven't said, I'm not going back. And I pray, Lord, that in the Spirit, they, they put a stake in the ground and say, no more. I'm not going back, moving forward. I'm going to uh, to farm the land. I'm going to, to be a, a person who's going to grow and prosper even in the darkest of times because I have determined to follow the Lord. Lord, I pray that there's anybody who's watching right now, they don't know you, God. They don't know you as their Savior. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, that you begin to minister to them. You begin to draw out of them. And Lord, they lean into your grace. They lean into your love. They surrender their lives to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your salvation, for your grace, for your presence, and your provision. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, guys, we love you. We care about you. Do not forget that. Until next time, have a great week.